Cliff Castle Museum, Keithley, West Yorkshire, England, is a local heritage museum which opened in the Grand, Victorian, Neo-Gothic Cliff Castle in 1959. Originating as Cliff Hall in 1828, the museum is the successor to Keithley Museum which opened in Eastwood House, Keithley, in 1892. There is a series of galleries dedicated to various aspects of local heritage, and to displaying the house itself, which is a Grade II listed building. Entrance to the museum is free of charge. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, it's all in Yorkshire. So we're at Cliff Castle again today guys, I did promise you a revisit. Uh, we're entering a, um, a different entrance today. Uh, and what we're going to do is, I think the first port of call is going to be Pavilion Cafe. And then we'll check out the birds, the aviaries and stuff again. And then we'll go inside. Now, uh, you all have got all the information you need from the B-roll. Now the initial, uh, the initial filming guys, uh, in the museum, I'm going to have to pick the recording up from inside the museum, uh, because apparently to record you have to do it with prior permission. Uh, we saw all these before, so yeah, yeah. You have to, um, you need prior permission, prior consent to record. Uh, which, to be honest with you, I, d I don't know why it's council, but it is what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick recording up once I'm in there. I mean, it is what it is. Oh, we didn't go in this side before. Ah.
Hey, well, are you allowed here? Can you come in? Oh, all right. You can enjoy our bog in a box. The what in a box? It's a bog, a peat bog. What's one of them? You know, the really squelchy bits you get at the top of the hills and you go up on the moors. Oh, yeah. Full of these mosses. All right. These crazy mosses in here. It's a bit overgrown, this. Don't really look like this. But those funny mosses called sphagnum. Oh, and, all right. Uh, really important environmentally because they capture loads of carbon. Okay. So they're much better than trees at capturing carbon. They're like <coughs> our greatest climate change fighter. Well, that's really there. interesting because what I do is I make um, I make videos. Um, okay. And I talk about all kinds of different stuff. Well, and, you should definitely talk about peace. And abandoned places and, and oh, really? paranormal. And, and generally what I like is when I, when I go out, um, and do my filming and stuff. I always bump into really interesting people. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, I never knew that. Well, no, this, this is it. We call it our Cinderella habitat because people don't understand just how precious it is. That's so crazy. We've got these all over Yorkshire. We've got about twenty-five percent of the UK's blanket bogs in Yorkshire, and it's our greatest land store of carbon. So it's it's miles better than any forest would ever be at capturing carbon. Yeah. You can kind of you can take your Amazon and shove it in comparison to the tops of these hills, which is kind of crazy to think what we've got here in Yorkshire yeah, in the fight against climate change. It's crazy. So we we work to restore them because they're really badly damaged. Okay. So my team, the team I work with, spend all their time surveying them, looking at them, understanding what's gone wrong, and working out how to repair them. Okay, no problem. So if you want to learn more about it. Yeah, well, basically, what what my audience can do is is sort of pause um, the video and read all this at their own. Well, that would be leisure. cool. That would be amazing if they wanted to do that because there's so much to learn about these places. And if they are interested, they just need to have a wee nosy at Yorkshire Peat Partnership, which is Yorkshire's very mm. own peatland restoration oh, definitely. organization or charity, and that will give them a good idea of yeah what we do. No, that's, that's really cool. good information, but thank you very much yeah, for your time. Yeah, you honestly, you'll get obsessed, I promise. It's, uh, once you start learning about peatlands, it's just... Well, what's what's really nice, darling, right, is the fact that I've come in and um, you, you've spoken to me and you've given me some information and, um, you know, you've not asked me why why I'm doing what I'm doing and, and that's how it should be. Do you know what well, I mean? as far as I'm concerned, if you want to learn about peat, um, I'll give you all the time you want. So, this yeah. is it, this is what they do here. The, the, so it's the Yorkshire Peat Partnership. Yeah. And yeah. Um, restoring peatlands can have a positive impact in reducing a number of major environmental challenges uh, facing the region, not least. It, uh, it's, important, it's an important role in reducing carbon emissions. So, yeah, I think that's really good. And I didn't mention the flood mitigation. Yeah, anything that's good for the environment flood is good for us. Security, yeah. protecting our beautiful um, wildlife. It's all good. Well, thank well, you. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Hey, yeah, no problem, darling. You take care, won't you? You too. There you go. Some 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 interesting information about Pete. So this is not actually part of the castle itself, but last time I came, this were actually closed. So it's nice just to just have a look in. Oh, what's all this? Like an insect locker. The bug's in. <laughs> wow. You've heard of your, uh, your Amazon lockers, haven't you guys? This is a bug's locker. Is there actually stuff in here then? Whoa. Did you know the ladybug isn't in fact a bug but a beetle? Ladybugs bleed from their knees when threatened. You can't tell a ladybug's age by counting its spots. Oh, you can't. All right. I just found out, after all these years, my mum were lying to me. 
Anyway, I don't want to touch it because I don't want to break it, but that's that's very interesting. These gardens are for your pleasure, please help to protect them. Wow, it's amazing. I love stuff like this. And this this is why it's so important to to film and to put stuff like this on YouTube because you know, one day this could be gone. When all you guys can look back on it, is it? Right, I think I'm in Pavilion Cafe now, guys, so I am going to pick it back up. Free book exchange. I will pick it back up uh, once I've spoken to the proprietor. See if I can get permission to film in here, so I'll pick it back up. Right guys, so we are outside the Pavilion Cafe. I have spoken to the owner. Absolutely lovely woman. And I'll tell you what, when you watch this video, um, big massive shout out to Grace, who gave me the uh, chop pops, <laughs> or whatever you call them, last time I came. Um, really, really nice. I think hmm, Jamaican ginger. I think that's what it was, sprinkled in um, hundreds and thousands and chocolate curls and all kinds of stuff. It was absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, she has given me permission to go in, guys. This is the outside. Now, this is sort of like a new structural area because it's sort of like it lasts five years. Now, before that, it was, um, it, apparently it looked completely different. Um, now, from the information I've got, it's always been a cafe, you know, pavilion, cafe, same thing. Um, these guys in here have been uh, running the place for about, I think approximately about two or three months. And the food, what we're doing here, apparently is all homemade. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, um, catch, a little, catch a little word with the owner, uh, see what kind of food they do, and um, uh, see what the drinks are, sort of like general price list and stuff like that. And then for all you lovely people who are in and around the Yorkshire area who definitely need to put Cliff Castle on your to-do list guys because it's amazing here. Um, you can get yourself in here, lovely refreshments, food and drink and um, yeah, you go home with full tummies. Uh, but yeah, let's go in and um, have a quick word with them. Hey, they are open. So. Um, get vegan Jaffa cake, yeah? Vegan Jaffa cake. So, uh, got external seating as well, guys, outside. You can sit outside. Bit, bit, bit cold today. I don't really want to be doing that, doing that, but uh, the option is there. Everything, from what I've been told, guys, everything is homemade. Uh, oh, chocolate orange cake pops. That's what I had before. Absolutely amazing. So, the the owner, the person who runs this lovely establishment, what, what's your name, sorry? Georgina. Georgina, yeah. I'll just welcome you. Welcome everybody to the channel, guys. Um, so basically, I'm not going to take too much, um, too much of your time up. Uh, last time I was here, uh, for what's grace and everything's home cooked, is that right? This one, sorry. Every, everything home cooked? Everything's homemade, yeah. Everything's um, homemade, all, they're brought the, in fresh. Yeah, all savoury food and sweet food. Savoury and sweet. So what kind of uh, food do you serve? What kind of meals do you do? So we do paninis, a variety of sandwiches, uh, nachos with three bean chilli and beef chilli. Uh, we've got specials such as lasagna, uh, cheese leek and potato pie. And then we do homemade soups as well. Um, and then all our cakes are homemade and scones. A uh, variety of different cakes really depends who wants to cook what. But ranging from flapjacks to lemon slice, coffee and walnut cake. Sort of and the famous um, cake pops. Cake pops, yeah. Famous now, cake can pops. I ask you, the cake itself? Uh -huh. what, is it? Is it Jamaican ginger? Chocolate orange. Is it chocolate orange? Chocolate orange. I thought it was Jamaican ginger. <laughs> it, but, but, honestly, it I um, I got a couple last time we were here last week. Um, I think it was Friday, and I got out and it fell off a stick. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It melted a little bit. <laughs> it was amazing. 
chocolate orange. It yeah. was amazing. I ate it before I left the grounds. I actually did the outro of my video, and you'll watch it, and you'll think it's funny. Um, as I'm talking with a mouthful. <laughs> That's how nice it was. I just wanted the viewers to know how nice these pops are. Oh, and I've got them in on video. So I highly suggest anybody who comes need to try, try one out. And, and I was just saying, um, Georgina, for all the local people mm -hmm. um, and who are local to the area, not, not just in the area, but out of the area, get Cliff Castle on your to-do list. Definitely. Get yourself down, come in here. You know, you've got drinks, hot food, everything's all made, lovely refreshments. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. She has got some customers now. So thank you very much for popping on. No, thank you so and much. And I will let you, I'll let you get back to work and I'll catch up with you in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank you. So not only guys, not only uh, do they do uh, magnificent food, everything's homemade and, and the coffee's to die for, uh, but not only do they do all that guys, but you actually um, you get a service with a smile. And it, it, it's a rarity these days, isn't it? You know, you go to somewhere and it's like, oh, five pound. No pleases, no thank yous. It's absolutely amazing here. You get service with a smile. Um, like I said, this is the first place I've come into. Um, so what we are gonna do now is just wrap it up a little bit here. Uh, and then we're gonna walk down and go into the castle itself, guys. So I'll pick it back up. So, just come out at cafe guys and I'm just walking down to um, to the fountains I mean we you know we got them on drone footage uh, but I really want to have a look at them in person but yeah fountains pond and bandstand uh, so we'll go straight I think it's straight down this bit and then I'll pick it back up when we get there so guys, we're just over at one of the fountains. Get that little beauty out. Absolutely amazing. Oh God, slipping all over the place here. I tell you what guys, I'm so glad I've decided to take the drone up today and not last, not on my last visit. Stick my trainers in washer tonight as well. They're filthy. Warning: deep water. Do not enter. So this is a pond. Not sure if there's any fish in there. Looks absolutely amazing though, doesn't it? Look at that in background. Beautiful. Right guys, you know the drill, I'm gonna pick it up once I get inside of the museum.
<coughs> just having to be a bit quiet guys because I don't want to sort of make out that I'm videoing but I mean she said it was fine anyway to be honest but I was bloody hell look at there's some stuff in here it's absolutely beautiful old TVs and stuff wow I can't believe I don't <laughs> I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever been in here you know and it's absolutely crazy because um, it, you know we're right on my doorstep it was right on my doorstep But yeah, this is amazing, is this? Like, it's like a walk, you know, I've just sort of spent the last half an hour or so having a conversation with um, one of the young girls that works here. And she is very, very into all this uh, vexing, paranormal, all that kind of stuff. And the thing is, if somebody, if somebody is into that kind of stuff and, and they're interested in it, I'll, I'll give them my time. But I was just saying that the majority of the time I basically uh, like when I'm out urbexing and stuff sorry can't concentrate because I'm taking pictures but yeah when I'm out urbexing so I'm generally used to seeing uh, places like this abandoned and derelict so to come in here and to see the kind of place where I would normally go on urbex in uh, in full living colour let's just say you know it's just it's beautiful and it's, it's literally like you know you could just set you could set up home here today and just move in it's absolutely fantastic has my camera gone off the skull of a tiger Skull of a young brown bear. <sighs> this is incredible, is this place? So I've only got 40 minutes though, guys, so it's even less now, so.
Someone's been making some money out of taxidermy. Pigeon. Just have to cut it down there because there's a there's a member of staff sat in there. And I don't know if she'd uh, appreciate being filmed, but some of these holes are absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. I have been in here before, guys. <clears throat> oh, clock in and clock out machine. Yeah, I have been in here before. I remember. It's just been that many years since. God, it's got to be what? 14, 12, 14 years since I last come in here. That's cool, isn't it? Look at that. Whew, call different species of bees. Tell you what, guys, if you're local. If you've not been here, you need to get here. It's absolutely amazing.
seen me, he's done a morgue. You don't have to do anything, you just, you just sit there holding it. So, so what, what, what do you do then? You just play it like, like you do a xylophone. Does it help if you know a tune? No, any tune will do. Um, I'll try to think of one, I know. There we go. Diddle, 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 diddle. Of it. That's good. That's like, ding, 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 ding. I don't know. That's very good, isn't that? That is very good. That is very, very good. Musical stones. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's brilliant, is that? They came from the first museum in Keithley. Crazy. That is now in Victoria Park, if you're from Keithley. Yeah. That's now the Weatherspoons, isn't it? And the swimming pool's just next door. Weatherspoons, yes, Weatherspoons. There's the big. There's the roundabout out here. Yes. Yeah, the Weatherspoons up on the North Street. Yes. Is that the one you're talking about? Because I think there's only one in there. I think will be. And there's this slide, the swimming pools, just somewhere in the grounds of the Victoria Park. Ah, oh, right, yeah, I see what you mean. Right, yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So. These wonderful stones are here for you to enjoy, have a play. <laughs> oh, that's an experience anyway. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, last week I came and I was making a little video outside, but I couldn't, I couldn't actually get in. Yeah. Um, so I was filming through the windows yeah. in and around the area. And I was doing that because I knew it was shut. Yeah. Um, but then about sort of 10, 15 minutes later, I saw a police car on the ground, so walking back back around and I thought, oh, crikey, someone wrong place. Yeah. Saying someone's trying to break in. But no, it was just because I couldn't get in, you see. But um, yeah, I've managed to get in today. It's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So I can only um, sort of, um, you know, I'd say thank you for what, you, what you've done for the place and what you continue yeah. to do to it. Because, yeah. you know, without you guys, um, you know, it, who knows what it'd be. Yeah. It certainly probably wouldn't be a museum, would it? Yeah. Uh, and it's all free. Yeah. Well, it's not free. It's like, like your colleague was saying, yeah. um, you know, it's funded for in in many different ways. You know, taxpayers. I think lottery have a little bit yeah, to do with it as well. Don't they? Um, obviously, it's funded for all kinds of, through all kinds of different uh, means and ways. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it is free of charge, so yeah. it's been absolutely fantastic. That's the family tree of the Butterfields. Family tree. Ah, brilliant. Enough. Wrong form. Get a picture so of the last surviving person died in 2015. So it's gone all the way and that's it. So, so beyond that there's nobody. There's no direct butterfields. So that's it, they've all gone now? Yeah. Crazy. <coughs> so Isaac will be original. He's got connections, I think by some descendant connections with the Roosevelt's in America. So, 1880, 1785 is the original Isaac, and when it goes all the way down to here. Yes, when she died, 2015. Uh, she was quite old as well, wasn't she? Uh, nine, yeah, 90. 90. Oh, blimey. Fantastic. Right, lovely. Thanks for that. Yeah. Right, guys, I've just come back out. Um, I'm just going to put my tripod on. Because I've just bought some gems. Now I'm not a big gem sort of crystal person. Uh, I, well, <clears throat> I have I have a um, a tourmaline tourmaline um, stone pendant, uh, but I've just bought a couple more. Now I've had to take a picture of the display stand where I've got them from, so I can show you guys. So I'll tell you guys what they are, and I don't forget. Now I know this one. I know that one straight away, guys. This is a tiger's eye. <coughs> this is a tiger's eye. And then, um, what else have we got? So we've got a mini gemstone heart, which is very nice. We have got a rose quartz 
and um, what's this one? Hang on a minute. I think that one is for rider night. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Now, I'm not um, an expert on gems and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the information on what they all are. I hope the tiger's eye is. I purposely bought it. I and mean, then I'll bring it back to you guys and I will let you know what the ones I've bought mean. Right guys, so the first bit of information I have is on the Rose Quartz um, gem. Now I think I've picked, because I picked all these blinds you see, I didn't know what any of them were apart from the tiger's eye. So I think I've made a good choice. Um, with the second one which is the rose quartz i've picked up uh, so this may be used to balance emotional health release emotional blockages and balance other chakras um, once you recognize and feel pure love within you this pure love energy is what those around you feel and see and most importantly what they react to uh, so that's the first one and i'm loving the sounds of it and uh, we'll go on to the next one so I'm coming to you with the second one guys and that is the Rhodonite It's a stone of compassion an emotional balancer that clears away emotional wounds and scars from the past and that nurtures love it simulates clear and activates the heart Rhodonite grounds energy balances yin yang and aids in achieving one's highest potential it heals emotional shock and panic Right, so the mini heart gemstone promotes healing, balance, and a spiritual concept of love, compassion, growth, and truth. Hmm. Right, on to the last one, guys, which is the tiger's eye. It balances the soul, elevates anxiety, and restores confidence. This stone is used to increase wealth and vitality. Tiger's Eye brings protection, uh, protection against negative energy and strengthens self-worth. So, um, I think I have made a very good decision in uh, what gems I've just picked up. Now, like I said, I bought four. I bought the Tiger's Eye. Uh, which I knew what that wore anyway a friend of mine's got one so I thought you know what I'll get myself one as well now the other the other uh, crystal stones didn't have a clue what they were I just picked them at random uh, done a quick google search on all three and yeah that is what they are and that is the meaning of them so like I said I think I've done a very very uh, I've made a very good decision in choosing those uh, gemstones but it is getting dark and a little bit cold so for me I'm going to wrap it up this has been Cliff Castle it's been amazing please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one guys bye for now